Hello, my name is Dylan Reister, and I work as the International Student and Education Abroad Specialist in the Center for International Education. Today's presentation is going to discuss how you can maintain your F-1 visa status as an international student at Madison College. The Department of Homeland Security, otherwise known as DHS, is responsible for international relations and affairs. This is a government agency and housed within it is SEVP or the Student and Exchange Visitor Program. SEVP monitors F1 international students and their dependence activity while within the United States to ensure that the rules and regulations are being followed by international students. Within SEVP is the SEVIS system. SEVIS is the Student Exchange Visitor Information System we will use CVIS to do things such as create your I-20s, record any updates or changes to your student status, report any authorizations to the U.S. government such as a reduced course load or employment authorizations. We are not the only ones who use CVIS, however. Officers around the world at U.S. embassies and other federal agencies such as the Department of Motor Vehicles, Social Security Agencies, and Internal, Internal Revenue Services for Taxation also use CVIS. All of your important student information should be recorded and updated appropriately within the system. As an international student specialist, it is my job to help students understand the regulations. It is your job, however, as an F1 student to make sure you are following the regulations and that you're seeking out help whenever there is something you don't understand. The next slides will go over different ways that you can maintain your status. Part of maintaining your F1 status is making sure that all of your documents are valid. One of these documents is your passport. A passport should be valid at least six months into the future when entering the United States. It should also be valid at all times while you are within the United States. Because of this, you are able to renew it while you are here. This process is done by working through your home country consulate or embassy. Your visa must be valid when entering the United States. It can expire while you are here, but if you wish to travel outside of the United States and then return using your F-1 visa, you must renew it before you do so. Because it can be expired while you are here in the U.S., you can only renew it from outside of the United States. Your I-20 document will stay valid by making sure all the information on there is always correct and updated if needed. Updates to the I-20 are made through the SEVIS system by the Center for International Education. If you would like an update, you can submit a request through the ISS portal. I am happy to guide students through this process at any time throughout the term. You will notice that on the first page of the I-20 document, you will have a program start and end dates. These dates should always represent the duration of your studies. If you need a longer time to study in your current program, you can submit what's called a program extension request through the ISS portal. This is just one example of how you might need to update the I-20 document. You should also have entry and exit stamps in your passport that tells the U.S. government and us what type of visa you use to enter the U.S. and how long you are el eligible to remain here. This is linked to your I-94 arrival record, which ensures that you are here under lawful status. If at any point you're uncertain about whether or not your documents are accurate or up to date, please contact ISS to talk to one of our CIE staff, staff members. Enrollment is one of the main reasons that F-1 students actually fall out of status. As an F-1 visa holder, you must be enrolled full-time, meaning 12 credits in the fall and spring semester, with summer being optional unless it is your first term. Full-time enrollment means that 12 credits of yours are actually being completed, not that you're just enrolled, but that you're actually making academic progress and receiving a grade in these classes. For the 2022 and 2023 academic year, the COVID regulations have actually been extended. That means that only one credit out of the 12 required credits must be in person. 
Typically, in non-COVID times, nine out of the 12 credits must be in person, with the rest of your credits being able to be online. We currently don't know what regulations will look like in future terms, so please plan ahead and understand that in the future you might be required to have way more in-person credits than you are required to have for the 2022-2023 academic year. At Madison College, we have a grade called the WNA, or Withdrawn Due to Not Attending, a class. You will receive a WNA if you sign up for a class and then you never show up or participate, communicate with the instructor, or complete any assignments. This grade is automatically given to you by the instructor and then that class no longer bears any credit for you. So for example, if you are enrolled in 12 credits but do not show up, or complete the online assignments or in-person assignments for one of your three credit classes, you will get a WNA for that three credit class. Then you will only have nine credits, which is a violation of your F1 status. The idea behind the WNA is that you don't receive a failing grade of an F if you accidentally sign up for a class and then never drop it. The failing grade would ultimately impact your overall GPA and academic progress where the WNA just looks like a withdrawal and does not impact the GPA. However, keep in mind what the impact of the WNA is on your visa status. It is problematic because it could be difficult to rebuild your schedule with 12 credits at any point in the term when you might receive a WNA. If Johnny is enrolled in the following classes, accounting for four credits, tax one for four credits, Intro to Business for three credits and QuickBooks Intermediate for one credit, and he misses the first three weeks of QuickBooks Intermediate and receives a WNA, is this a problem for his visa status? The answer to this is yes, because originally he was enrolled in 12 credits. However, for one of his credits, he received a WNA. This would mean that he's actually now considering to have 11 credits instead of the 12 credits required to maintain his F1 status. I know that 12 credits could seem overwhelming, especially if you're a first-time international student studying in the United States. The F1 visa regulations do allow a few options for taking less than 12 credits. The following reasons for being authorized for a reduced course load include academic difficulties, medical need, or if you're in your final semester. You might qualify for an academic difficulty reduced course load if you're having unfamiliarity to teaching methods in the United States, difficulty with reading requirements, or if you're placed in an improper course level. The academic difficulty RCL is generally available in your first or second semester, so that's a good time to gauge whether or not you can handle a 12 credit course load. If you have a medical need, such as a physical accident, a sickness, depression, anxiety, maybe cultural shock, etc., you might also be eligible for a medical RCL. In order to be eligible, you must get a letter from a doctor. Uh, the doctor must be a medical doctor or MD, a doctor of osteopathy, or a licensed psychologist within the United States. And finally, you'll be eligible for a final semester reduced course load if you need less than 12 credits to graduate in your final semester. So for example, if you only need six credits to graduate, we can give you permission to take only six credits in that final semester. RCL requests are submitted through the ISS portal, processed by the staff in the Center for International Education, and then reported to CBIS. I've mentioned a few times throughout this presentation that we are required to report and update any changes to your student status or situation to the SEVA system. One of those changes might be your address. While you are here, the U.S. government requires that you have two addresses on file at all times. Your local address, which is the one here in the Madison area, and your permanent address from abroad. Your local address here must be a physical street address. It cannot be a post office box because those are not allowed in the SEVA system. You must report any changes to your address through your My Madison College portal within 10 days of moving. 
As mentioned before, you'll report updates to your address in your My Madison College portal. By now you should know how to access and utilize the portal, but just in case you don't, here is a little snapshot of what it looks like. If you type in My Madison College Portal into the search bar on the Madison College website, you'll be brought into a page where you can log into the portal. There you'll see a variety of different tiles. Any updates to your address or your personal information can be done utilizing the My Profile tile. Employment is often an interest of students who have the F-1 visa. It is a benefit for you to take advantage of while you're here in the United States. However, it's important to keep in mind that you need an authorization in order to engage in employment that is off campus. On-campus employment is much more accessible, however. International students can start working during fall and spring semesters. You can work up to 20 hours per week during the school year. If you're interested in on-campus employment, please visit our Career and Employment Resource Center or contact the Center for International Education. Please keep in mind that on-campus employment is limited to Madison College or the regional campuses of Madison College. On the contrary, you do need certain authorizations to work off campus. Some stipulations of this are that the work that you do off campus needs to be directly related to your major or program of study. You will not be eligible for work until you've had an active F1 status for one academic year. There are a lot of details when it comes to getting employment authorizations that we'll go over more thoroughly in the new International Student Seminar class. However, I highly recommend thinking about and planning for employment well in advance so you obtain those authorizations in time for wanting to engage in a work experience. Having employment without the appropriate visa authorization is a violation and therefore would have serious repercussions. If you have questions about employment, again, we will go over this in more detail in the NIST class, but otherwise I welcome you to email iss at madisoncollege.edu so we can answer any questions. Lastly, here's a preview of what our ISS website looks like. To navigate to it, you can go to www.students.madisoncollege.edu. From there, you'll navigate to the Support Services tab and find International Student Services on the left-hand side. This website will be updating in October, but for now you can find visa requests, information about maintaining your F1 status, a link to the ISS portal where you'll submit any, um, any requests that will require a CVIS update. We have some healthcare resources as well as information regarding travel requirements and work permissions. I always recommend that students start by looking on the website to see if they can find an answer to their question there, but if not, I welcome you to email iss at madisoncollege.edu. Thank you for viewing this online orientation, and I hope you have a great semester.